Okay, so, <coughs> excuse me, this is where we left off in this last example. Uh, and again, what we're looking for is the area of the surface that comes from uh, sort of slicing through this sphere through the plane z equals 3. Um, <clears throat> we determine that by uh, looking at the portion of the sphere that would lie within this paraboloid here. And so um, through the work that we've done, we found the uh, region in the xy plane that that little cap, I'm going to call it, lies directly above. So we're going to use that in the double integral. Um, but we wrote our set D describing that region in recta um, not rectangular, sorry, in uh, polar coordinates because it's a circle or a disk, and uh, polar coordinates are usually going to be a lot easier to work with in that in that scenario. Um, <clears throat> okay, so this is giving me the region, but now I need to know what it is I'm I'm putting in for my integrand. So uh, the surface area formula requires me to have my partial derivatives of z with respect to both x and y. Um, and it's the sphere specifically that we're trying to find the surface area of, or that piece of the sphere that I'm calling the cap. Um, here's the equation of that sphere after completing the square. I need to isolate that z so I can represent z as a function of x and y. Um, I'm going to talk through a couple of the algebraic steps and then just go straight to what that should look like. So <coughs> notice here, I can subtract the x squared and y squared over, take square roots of both sides, um, and then add the 2 here. So that's going to give me z equals the square root of uh, 4 minus x squared minus y squared. Um, and then when I add the 2, that's going to be outside the radical here. Okay, uh, Taking square roots of both sides, I didn't need to do a plus or minus here because I know that the cap on this sphere is on the upper hemisphere. It's on the, the top portion of the sphere as opposed to the bottom, which would imply that we want the positive radical here. So that's the function that we're working with. But uh, we don't use that in the integrand explicitly. Again, I want partial derivatives. So let's find those down here. <coughs> partial of z with respect to x. Okay, so uh, if we found the partial derivative of this with respect to x, it's going to be negative x over the square root of 4 minus x squared minus y squared. Um, partial of y with, uh, sorry, partial of z with respect to y will be negative y over 4 minus x squared minus y squared. <coughs> okay, now for this problem I'm going to set up my integrand um, off to the side to just kind of simplify things down before taking it into an integral. So remember what we want is the partial of z with respect to x squared plus the partial of y, or sorry I did it again, partial of z with respect to y squared plus 1 and then that whole thing is going to be under a square root. Okay, well, <clears throat> going through some of the steps ahead of time, notice if I were to square each one of these, I'll get an x squared in my numerator here, a y squared in my numerator here, and then the radical in both of these is going to go away, and I'm left with 4 minus x squared minus y squared. Common denominator, so when I add these two things, it's just going to give me... Um, x squared plus y squared over 4 minus x squared minus y squared. So I'm doing some of the algebra mentally and just kind of saving some time that way. Um, <coughs> I have a plus 1 here, but what I want to do is get a common denominator so that I can group everything all into one rational expression. So I'm going to write my 1 as 4 minus x squared minus y squared over 4 minus x squared minus y squared. And something really convenient happens here. The x squared and the y squared in the numerator cancels with these two, just giving me the 4. Uh, here I'm going to be left with <coughs> the square root of 4 over 4 minus x squared minus y squared. Okay. Now I can do a couple of things. First of all, I can take the square root of 4 in the numerator, giving me a 2 there. Secondly, 
um, I want to do a conversion to polar coordinates, which we suggested we were going to do up here. And this, this integrand that we're going to use is pretty well suited for that. Um, negative x squared minus y squared is negative r squared. So this whole thing simplifies down to 2 over the square root of 4 minus r squared. Okay? <coughs> Excuse me. So, um, with that said, we can now go to our surface area formula and use this in polar coordinates. Um, so my surface area formula uh, is a double integral, but this time we're going to be using polar coordinates, like we said. The limits of integration are given in this set d right here. So theta goes from 0 to 2 pi, r goes from 0 to root 3. 0 to 2 pi, 0 to root 3. And then this is what my integrand simplified to. But remember, um, <clears throat> because I'm switching to polar coordinates, my dA in the double integral that I would normally have here is going to become an r dr d theta. So I can write that this way, 2r over the square root of 4 minus r squared dr d theta. Okay. Now, I can split that, as we typically do uh, in problems like this, into two integrals. Bring the d theta out, like this. Now, for the integral here, <coughs> I can see that solving this is going to boil down to using a u substitution. So I'm going to let u be 4 minus r squared here. I'm going to write that off to the side. u is equal to 4 minus r squared making du um, negative 2r dr, okay? Um, I can multiply both sides by a negative 1 to get negative du equals uh, positive 2r dr, since that's what I have right here, 2r dr. That reduces the integrand down to uh, a u to the uh, negative 1 half, du, and then the negative that I'm getting here, I'm going to use that in a second. I'm going to put it out here, but it's going to disappear in just a second. <coughs> okay. Next thing I need to do is change my limits of integration. So if I plug 0, or wrong, wrong place, if I plug this 0 in for u here, it becomes 4 minus 0, which is 4. If I plug root 3 in for r, then I have 4 minus root 3 squared, or 4 minus 3, which is 1. If you notice, my lower limit of integration is actually larger than my upper limit of integration. So what I'm going to do is use the minus here to switch the order of integration there. And this will give me 0 to 2 pi d theta integral from 1 to 4 of u to the negative 1 half du. And then from here, this is pretty easy to solve. So I get a 2 pi here. Um, this, when I integrate, is going to give me uh, 2 uh, u to the 1 half from 1 to 4. Bring the 2 out, that becomes 4 pi. And what I'm left with is u to the 1 half, uh, root u, I can just call it that. Square root of 4 is 2, square root of 1 is 1, and so this becomes 2 minus 1, which is 1. whole thing comes out to just 4 pi. And, oop, I kind of ran out of space there, didn't I? Move that up. So, sorry, that's what I was doing off, off screen there. Um, that wraps this problem up, and it also wraps up section 15.5 for us.